Let's talk about what happens inside a Mormon temple. My credentials are that I used to be Mormon and I participated in most of these ceremonies. As always, this video is for educational purposes, so if talking about the temple, seeing the temple is going to offend you or upset you in any way, please don't watch this video. If you want to, ignore this warning and watch the video anyway and leave an angry comment calling me names, insulting me, telling me I'm gonna go to hell and that I'm a horrible, terrible, sad person, you can just save your breath. I promise I've heard it before. Anyway, let's talk about the Mormon temple. This is a Mormon temple, probably the most famous one in Salt Lake City, but they come in many shapes and sizes. Probably the most well-known thing that happens inside a Mormon temple is baptisms for the dead. Mormon temples have this big tub or pool that is called a baptismal font where they baptize people for the dead. Not all of them have the oxen, but that's an interesting touch in some of them. Some people hear baptisms for the dead and think that Mormons are actually baptizing dead bodies, but that's not what happens. Mormons who are found worthy to enter the temple are baptized by proxy for people who have died. This is because Mormons believe that everybody has to be baptized a Mormon in order to make it to heaven. So if somebody died and they were never baptized Mormon, Mormons baptize them by proxy, and that person up in the spirit world has the opportunity to accept or reject the baptism. If you die and you have a Mormon relative, chances are they're going to baptize you by proxy after you die. When I was a Mormon, you started doing this as young as 12 years old. I think now they've changed it so you can be 11. Correct me if I'm wrong. This part of the Mormon temple isn't a secret. You might have heard about it before. The next part is considered too sacred to talk about outside the temple. So most people don't know about it unless they're really familiar with Mormonism. And that's why I put a trigger warning on this video because I know that there will be Mormons who are upset that I mention it at all. I used to believe that I would actually get struck by lightning if I talked about this outside of the temple. I no longer believe it's true. Therefore, it no longer holds power over me. I am going to talk about it. Another thing that happens in the temple is the endowment ceremony. Going through the endowment ceremony is something that Mormons believe you have to do to make it to the highest level of heaven. These are the clothes that you have to wear. When I was a member of the church, the endowment ceremony was really, really long. I think it was like two, two and a half hours, and it was where you learned the secret handshakes to get into heaven. I think they have shortened it now, but you still learn the handshakes. Some of the people participating in the endowment ceremony will get up and stand in this circle and do the true order of prayer. You all stand in the circle together, you raise your arms up and you say, Oh God, hear the words of my mouth, repeated three times. They also play a movie as part of the temple ceremony that shows Adam and Eve and the creation of the world. It's very long, um, but you could Google it, it's available. The whole thing is on YouTube, secretly, because obviously, again, this is supposed to be so sacred that we can't talk about it. But you go through for the first time as yourself, and then the next times that you go through, you will go through by proxy for somebody who has died. It's the same thing as the baptism. Mormons believe by doing this, by proxy for dead people, those people that are dead will have the opportunity to accept this in the spirit world and hopefully make it to the highest level of heaven. After you get through this part, you go through the veil using the special handshakes you learned and go to the celestial room, which is um, symbolic of the celestial kingdom, the highest level of heaven. Mormons are encouraged to do this as often as they can. Mormons are also married and sealed inside of their temples. And yes, during your marriage, you are still dressed like this. The couple would be married kneeling across an altar like this. The wedding slash sealing ceremony is very, very short. You are not allowed to say your own vows. Um, you just listen to the officiant, say the vows for you, and if you agree, you reply yes. This is also something that Mormons do for people who have died by proxy. You do have to be careful though, because if you do it for too long or for too many couples um, kneeling here, you might pass out. It hasn't happened to me, but it has happened to a number of people I know. There is also a very extremely secret ceremony called the second anointing that happens in Mormon temples. Most Mormons don't know about this and never will. That's because it's never supposed to be talked about. <laughs> unless it happens to you, you probably won't know about it unless you look at anti-Mormon material. This takes place in a room in the LDS temple called the Holy of Holies, which again, nobody goes to unless you're one of these special people. As far as we know, this happens to the highest leadership in the church, the prophets and apostles, and sometimes other special members. If you want to know more about exactly what takes place during a second anointing ceremony, you can look it up. It's available. But um, basically, an officiator will wash your feet. Once you have been through a second anointing ceremony, your calling an election is made sure. In other words, you are guaranteed a spot in the highest level of the highest level of heaven. No matter what happens, you're going there. You're good. Like I said, most Mormons don't know about this one. It is a very big secret. I never heard about it until like over a year after I left the Mormon church. 
Anyway, there's a few other things that happen in the Mormon temple, but those are the main ones. I hope this helped answer some questions and let me know if you have any more.